Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite people to talk about and how he is handling the pandemic. Now, I assumed he would be handling quite well because the pandemic, I've been stuck at home for a week. Um, I did go out Tuesday to Home Depot and ACB just to get food. And I don't think I'm going to go out. So by next Tuesday, I would have not left my home outside of walking my dog for over a week. And I'm already kind of stressed out. I guess being at home. So I do work remotely and from home many days, but three days a week. But you still interact with people. We still have Dave and Buster's Wednesdays. And yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's definitely one of the more fascinating things that have been going on is how do you, I mean, you work from home and, <laughs> you know, it kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. It feels really weird. That being said, obviously, it's nice that I own a company and therefore I don't really need to be too worried about being laid off because I own the company, of course. And as someone who owns a company, being laid off is not something that I would do to myself. Now, for my employees, for the marketing company, I think it's stabilized. And I don't really see the need to uh, lay off anyone in that company right now or in the future. We have enough money until the end of 2020. Now back to what's going on with Magic players. I think Magic players are going to learn how to play online. And that is my gut feeling is that once they start playing MTG Arena, you know, MTG Arena is really good. I criticize Magic the Gathering all the time, like all the blanking time. And yet even I can say, huh, this is pretty good. Now, what criticisms I have a there's not enough cards in it for pioneer I think they should start adding cards to the card pool so it's not as you know one of the main advantages magic the gathering has it's it's been around for so long that there's so many different cards and then b it's still not out for iOS so whoever their developers are are absolute garbage because duels of the planeswalkers in 2014 or 2013 they it, they had iOS so I'm not sure like what happened here it seems kind of strange that I mean it seems very strange that they had iOS for a program that was about the same and now they don't Like, what's going on here? Does that make sense to anyone? I would say no, it does not make sense to me. Um, now, on top of all of this stuff, uh, one other main concern I have about uh, people staying indoors is not just that they're not playing Magic. I think they're still going to play EDH. Uh, my main concern is uh, now they're going to start using social media more and clout chase. So one thing that one thing that the mana source is really good at is cloud chasing. <laughs> you know, I give him full credit for being a master in uh, doing that. So I think we're going to see crazier and crazier type of things and statements being made. And I guess we will see. There's still a lot of unknowns and to be quite frank, when you talk about Magic the Gathering, you, you talk about, I always think, oh, paper magic. Oh, of course, playing in person. That may no longer be true in the future. I think one of the things that could happen is people don't go back to paper magic, for especially for standard. Now, if they ever got their act together, which, I mean, they could make so much money if they ever got their act together and then hired a bunch of really good coders and started coding, they would do really well for themselves. Like, really, really, really well. Um,
if they just put started and eventually if they had all the cards in the MTG arena, I think that's probably the future. Um, they already have all cards in standard. They have quote all historical cards, which makes sense because that's just the cards they already had coded. Uh, they don't have Pioneer, so they got to work on Pioneer first, and then maybe Modern, and then maybe Legacy, and then uh, code them all, which would be ED8s, of course. This is going to be a pretty interesting time, and if you don't need Magic cards, don't buy Magic cards. It's really that simple. If you do not need Magic cards, do not buy Magic cards. Uh, especially do not buy standard. I think that a lot of people are you know, still going to buy standard, but standard has, I mean, what are you going to do with it? I'm, I'm being, I'm not being mean. I'm asking you a real question. Like, okay, you bought some standard collectors. I mean, if you buy standard, at least buy the regular booster box because at worst you can draft it. And there's 36 packs instead of 12. But even like if Ikoria is a fantastic set, what's the point? You can't play it. Maybe 5% of Ikoria will be able to play in EDH. Maybe. But the large majority of Ikoria are of a set in Magic, of a standard set in Magic will be... Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I don't see things going well for Paper Magic after Magic Fest Online from Channel Fireball. Once they figure out, hey, wait a second, we don't need to put these giant deposits on these conference centers. Hey, we don't need to travel. Hey, we don't need to be with smelly people. Or ourselves be smelly. I've been on the Facebook groups and the pages of various local game stores. And I think there is a panic. But the panic is nothing compared to when Ikoria comes out. When Ikoria finally comes out, you're going to see just... Um, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to carry it to begin with who are local game stores. But... Magic is a luxury item, and in times when people don't know what's going to happen with their jobs, when they don't know what's going to happen with their savings, or their savings is being demolished, I don't think uh, now is a really good time to be buying standard Magic cards when you can play online for free. Now for reserve lists... I expect reserve list cards to go 50% discount. And I expect uh, Underground C to hit $200. Not 200 buy list. Just $200 is what someone would, you know, happily accept on Facebook Marketplace. So it's not just the new cards. I think all the cards are going to be affected. I, I just think the new cards ha or the reserve list cards have you know, weak hands are going to sell and then prices are going to uh, crater. I mean, when you survive, you got to survive, right? You got to survive first. Cardboard is not going to help you survive. It is more useless than toilet paper. And the U.S. response has been really poor. Um, if you bought a Tabernacle in 2018, you paid $2,400 for it. Right now, even if you wanted to sell it for $1,400, no one would want to buy it for $1,400. So 2018 was the high of Magic the Gathering. And to be quite frank with you, I don't think we'll ever get to that point anytime you know, within the next 20 years. That point was like insane. 
like that was something that you I don't think you can duplicate um, overall it's going to be interesting and a lot of people are going to lose a lot of money and that's to be expected right because again no who's buying this stuff now like really truly who's buying this stuff right now at this moment in time Nobody. Like, why would anyone buy it? I, I just looked at Tabernacle Pendleville, and it was a $3,100 card on May 7th, 2018. And today, it's about 1800 market price. And I don't think anyone could sell for 1800 I think you would be um, hard-pressed to even... I wouldn't even buy for fifteen, Maybe 1400 I would look at it. But, um, yeah, and that's a beautiful card. That's, like, a really great card. Hmm. So I'll show you some graphs a little later, but it's pretty savage. I don't think anyone's going to go ahead and say that this is, um, that these cards, like, remember that one dude who bought, like, all those moats? Yeah, how is that? You know, and then it went up to, like, oh, I guess it went up to 900. I thought it went up to 800. Yeah, how is that looking for you right now with your moats and the abyss? And my goodness, it's just such a beating. Like, I, I don't even understand it, how it's so bad guys it's just something that like out of a nightmare if you really consider it and if you're a local game store and you sign a contract to buy Icoria just get out of it just be like oh well you know we're bankrupt goodbye and hopefully they don't send it to you bye guys